So the three figures that are fundamentally referred to when we talk about Stoicism is Marcus Aurelius, Epictetus, and Seneca. Where did it start? In the Stoa. Stoa is a, a portico uh, where the philosophers gathered and entered into forms of dialogue. The key to being a philosopher or a Stoic is to take ownership and responsibility and to find in us the resolve and resource to resolve the difficulties that we're facing in life. The Stoics, the Socratics in general, say that the source of happiness is to become ethical. So it's through the development of our values and our qualities, which they use the word virtues, literally means strength. If I develop my qualities and my strength that I have latent, and I activate them through practice, is the source of my happiness. So, and I see this at the beginning, so it's easier. The source of happiness is not outside for them, it's inside. Because outside you can't control much, which is a very stoic way to look at life. Control what you can, and don't worry so much about what you don't can't control. You, you heard that before, right? But that's so, st a stoic approach. Why? It's logical. Why am I going to be concerned about what I, what I don't control? But then focus on what I can control, and what I can control is me. If I place my happiness in external circumstances, let me say, in what I have, what I've gained, or the success I have, I'm automatically going to be disappointed. Yeah, but does that mean that I do nothing in the world? No, I need to engage in the world without expecting much in return. By doing what I think I need to do and to do it well. Which is a bit of a contradiction for today's world, where we focus our activities in doing well in the world. Because we think if I do well in the world, I'll be happy. Have you ever noticed it doesn't work that way? Because we can do well and be unhappy. And not do so well according to the criteria of to do and be happy. Because it has nothing to do with external circumstances. Which is good. It means that you're owner of yourself, which is better. Now, but this requires something. Okay? It requires a certain behavior. And that's why most of the schools, they talk about being a philosopher. Why they say philosopher and not something else? Because philosophy encompasses an, a certain attitude to life, which the Stoics embrace fully. And I'd like to share it with you briefly. The ideal of philosophy has three fundamental characteristics. One is that the philosopher has a concern for others. The second thing is that the philosopher has an awareness, which is not only of himself and his world, but of the cosmos. The third principle they call the inner human being, or the inner self. It's a place where we can be free, without fear, in a state of serenity and at peace with oneself and others. Being in peace is that don't come disturb me. If I'm at peace, it doesn't matter that the world is in chaos, but I'm serene so that I can engage in that world. Because if I'm not serene, I cannot engage in the chaotic world. If I'm in chaos, and engage in chaos, equal chaos. You know, the formula is quite simple. So that's why they say we need to discipline ourselves to find our center, to find that place where we are serene and at peace with oneself, so that we can engage at the same time with the world around us. Acting in the world, but how? That's what people are asking. No, ask why you need to act, not why, not how. The how will come anyway. If you understand why you need to do what you need to do, the how will come. Yeah, so, the objective of philosophical life, according to the Stoics, is to have a good understanding between myself, others, and the universe. If you understand it that way, it's easy. The Stoic talk about ethics, logic, and physics, which are words which, in today's world, has a certain connotation. I'm going to try to explain them slightly differently. So, they talk about the practice of ethics, which is to allow us to understand our human qualities and to develop them so that we can master our body, our soul, and our spirit, they say. So that we can uh, be reborn in a greater harmony. In, we can engage and live life more fully. I'll talk about ethics in details in a second. Yeah. Second, logic. The exercise of logic for them 
is the correct exercise of the art of communicating with oneself and life. Logic for them is the search for truth. And we can search for truth through dialogue. This is Socratic. Eh? But generally speaking, when we enter in dialogue with others, what do we want to achieve? Generally speaking, we want to convince others of our ideas. I call it two monologues, not a dialogue. Why is that? Because the human ego wants to win at all costs. And a dialogue is, uh, Socrates says that it is entering together in search for truth, realizing that we don't have it yet. This is not a rhetorical answer, it's, it's an attitude. But if I go in in a dialogue with myself, and I'm trying to cover up myself, not to try to discover who I am, I'm just going to come up with a good story about myself, about life. We generally speaking, life catches up with us. The third one, uh, the practice of physics is to understand the laws of life and how they apply to us. So what are they recommending? They are recommending a practice, a daily practice, and Seneca develops very well in his, in his books, and all of them, Marcus Aurelius in his meditations as well. Uh, they, they develop a number of exercises which are translated in English as spiritual exercises. Nothing to do with religion. It's the exercise of the mind over body. But often enough, when, when life comes with its problems, we act instinctively from the point of anger, rage, blah, 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 not from the best in us, do we? Yeah. So the Stoics say, through the practice of virtue or ethics, we are going to learn a spiritual practice, which is to learn to elevate our conscience to that, to that which is for us the best today. Is it the best forever? No, today. Because today is not the best of tomorrow, is it? So Marcus already says, we have to be better today than, yes, than yesterday and worse than tomorrow. So the best today, now, at this point, where is that place in me where I'm centered, I'm calm, I can see things with perspective, I can use what I know to better decide my actions. Can you see it? Can you find it? I'm sure you all have it. Everybody has it, no doubt. And then from there, when you're faced with a problem, reflect from there and act from there. What will be the difference in the result? Enormous. Because you could be, you're going to be calmer, more balanced. Sometimes the result won't be as good as you think, but over practice and experience, we're going to learn. Because one of the practices was, at the end of every day, is to ask ourselves, what have I learned today? To become a better person. So a practical recommendation for the modern days, have, have a little notebook. And at the end of the day, take 10 minutes to say, today I've learned blah, blah. Without judgment, this is the key to anything I'm going to talk about in a minute. No judgment. You understand? Oh, I was good, bad, I'm really a blah, blah, blah. And with the list of insults starts about ourselves. No, no judgment. I've done that this way and I've learned that. Okay, tomorrow the same. After a while, you're going to see patterns in your behavior and you're going to learn from them and you're going to start modifying them. So the Stoics say this, above all, uh, philosophical life is a therapy of our passions. Do you know what the definition of passion is? To act without thinking. Okay, so I prefer the word enthusiasm. Because enthusiasm is what you choose to do and the energy, the motivation you put in what you're doing. Passion is explosive, short-lived and goes away. Do you know what the word enthusiasm means? It's, like, it's Greek for entheos, God within. But God for them is uh, your virtues, your qualities, you're activating your best in you. That's enthusiasm. It's beautiful, isn't it? So what do they say? During the day, they say that we have to take the opportunity um, to to become aware and to be in contact with ourselves throughout the day. And it starts in the morning by activating our consciousness immediately in the morning. So I'm going to translate this because I always use this as an example, which means in the morning, they suggest that we get up as soon as the modern world is the alarm clock goes off. Become in charge of yourself from the moment you get up. 
So instead of snooze 20 times, 10 times. And from 10 times to 7 times, and so on. And so it's like a little step at a time, because people say, I can't do that, I will never do that, so the ego takes over, we get irated. No, no, no. With the ego, it's simple. Small steps. Why did they propose that? Because it's an exercise of willpower. You exercise your will over your inertia, and you take possession of yourself. Do you understand that? Taking possession of oneself? After getting up, I'm going to translate in modern times, go and jump in the shower immediately, to wake up. And have a small practice, physical, emotional, and mental. You choose. I, I'm not going to tell you which one. I mean, there are many, but okay. So, I'll translate in philosophical terms. Hold the torch of your consciousness as high as possible during the day. Because generally speaking, we tend to be very mechanical. Do you understand? And we go and we enter in routine. The Stoics and philosophers are at war with routine. Because they say, we need to be aware of what we do and be in charge of what we're doing from the moment we get up to the moment we go to bed. Now, that's not possible. So what we can do is, at least three times a day, remember, where am I? Where is my consciousness? In my socks? In my bad moods? In what other people are saying? Or am I centered? Am I with it? Am I in that place that I described earlier on, which is the best in me? Or not? If I'm not, can I go there? What do I need to do to go there? Breathe in. Find a place in you which is the best in you. Takes how long? Three minutes. And stay there for a while. How? Go for a walk. You don't need a special room with special incense, with special music. No. You can go for a walk. And find that place. I'm not kidding. Because if we need all the paraphernalia to, to be with oneself, the paraphernalia starts controlling us. So being ethical is in the face of what we're the challenges we have, the decisions we have to make to decide what's right or wrong for you and act accordingly. And at the end of the, day, of the day, what did I learn? Because maybe my actions were wrong. Maybe the idea was fine, the execution crap, as they say, technically. And that's okay. I'm not judging that. Just write it and change it, improve it. As you can see, it's very uncritical. Uh, I'm not criticizing anything. Just learning and you should learn why, you, why should we criticize and if you don't criticize yourself guess what has going to happen you're going to stop judging others jesus fantastic because this is the biggest challenge why do we judge others because if they're bad as bad as me i feel comfortable because i'm not too bad because i'm not as bad as they are so fantastic i do nothing is that logical no and because i'm a philosopher intelligence is part of philosophy so we should use with intelligence what we know because our intelligence tells us that reaction is not reasonable and if it's not reasonable why do we do it then am i present or not how do i know i'm not present i do the same things five times i run like a lula to find my keys i'm not present okay this is what they call the application of will. But they say there's a minimum we have to do. We have to remember to do what I've just said. So no memory, we don't do it, we don't remember. Yeah. Memory, because we have a lot of technology at our disposal, you can use technology. It doesn't see in any philosophical book you can't use technology. I'm pragmatic, so I have reminders to do my things. So why not? No, I'm a purist. Mm, no, I, I, I use what life gives me today. I mean the 21st century, not in the first century of this era, which they used other methodology to remember. So, being a philosopher doesn't require this rigidity. No, it's, it's with intelligence to do what we think is right and find ways to doing it well. For whom? For you at least. Why? Because if we do it for us first, we're going to develop the ability, as I said at the beginning, to develop a concern for others. Because if I don't have a concern for myself, I cannot have concern for others. Do you understand that? I, I know it sounds simple. People confuse the idea of 
you know, I'm going to give myself fully. And this way, it's true, it's a good thing to do, but at the same time, I have also to feed myself, not physically, but at a human level, so that I learn. So that I do what I say I do and become an example to others, I suppose. Because if you can help yourself, you can help somebody else. If you can't help yourself, do you understand that? Sounds simple, but we have had 2,000 years of the idea that we have to be totally selfless. But we're reaching a point where there is too much experience that tells us that 100% selflessness does not exist. To help others, we have to help ourselves. So at the end of the day, as I said, uh, Seneca talks about the examination of one's own conscience. So this is the famous examination at the end of the day. What have I done today? What are the pitfalls I've fallen in? What have I successfully done? What quality did I use? And this is the key. What quality, virtue, whatever you want to call it, I used today to overcome the challenge that came to me? Did I do it with anger or did I do it calmly and serenely? What quality did I use? And if I use that quality, then remembering tomorrow to use that quality for other things. But it's so much easier to say the defects we have, don't, doesn't it? Now imagine, choose one or two qualities. Can you do that? Choose one or two qualities? Okay. Yeah. And then tomorrow or tonight, already use those qualities to, to do and face the challenge that you have to face. And to develop those qualities consciously. Once you do that, what happens? You're going to starve your defects because you don't focus so much on I'm so bad, I'm so bad, I'm so bad, I'm so bad. No, your energy will be focused on what you're good at. And then you're going to, to be able to face really the challenges that life brings to you. But we tend to do it the other way around. What is the difference between a quality and a virtue? A virtue is a quality that has become irreversible in you. So the quality is developing courage. A virtue, I have courage that I use at will. Everybody has qualities and virtues. We need to re, re or discover them and actively and consciously use them. Why? Because those are the tools at your disposal to engage in life. Instead, what we do is this. We go and ask somebody else to tell us what to do. They ask, we ask, give me the prescription list of five points that if I do, do those five points every day, I'll be in Nirvana. That's why most of the things I've seen online, very interesting. But most of them go with a very prescriptive approach. These are the four steps, the 12 steps, the five steps, the three things. And they're okay, maybe, but, but not always. The second point is the practice of dialogue or the practice of logic is to learn how to dialogue. So the purpose of a dialogue, Socratic, from a Socratic point of view, is to search for the truth. Which truth? About, about oneself first. For me, dialogue is one of the most important things. Because to learn and understand about oneself and about others, we need to be able to leave at home the ego and to be able to engage in an exchange that helps us to discover something we don't know yet. This is difficult. Um, and it requires to let go of all judgment, or let's call it in English, to be judgmental, so that we can enter and connect with someone else. But if I'm dialoguing with somebody and I'm judging the person, there's no dialogue. It's my ego trying to impose its strength on, on, on others. But what we need to do is to be able to go beyond that. And so um, the art of dialectic, which is the art of dialogue, is to find that which is timeless and permanent in us. So it's to take away all the layers, all the masks, and to dialogue with that which is essential in us, or identity. At the beginning, this is difficult. So slowly, we'll peel the layers when in the dialogue. We peel the layers that have been put there by our ego, which is trying to hyper-protect itself. People talk about happiness or being unhappy. The greatest source of unhappiness is the mask that we create of ourselves. And that mask becomes more and more elaborate 
to the point that we even lose understanding of that mask. So that's why it's better to take it off a bit so that we can get in touch with that which is the best in us. The Stoic called that a double movement of the soul, to be able to elevate our consciousness, to connect with the best in us, and to be able to come down in the world and to express that best in us in our actions. Do you understand? That's the dialogue. That point of reason, that point of our conscience that tells us, generally speaking, quite often what to do and what's right, but we don't listen to it too much. So the dialogue is to listen to that and then find the ability to free the movement to go down and express it in the world, in our actions. That's the dialogue, that's the system. Now, that's within oneself, and then we can engage with others in doing that. The third one, which is the practice of physics, could be summarized by the art to learn how to die. Because to die is, in everyday life, is the art of letting go. Because every day we have to let go of something. If we want to go beyond that, we need to kind of accept the inevitability of life and its cycles. And trying to discover what's behind this inevitability of life, which is me or who I am. To do that, the Stoics, like most schools of philosophy in their, in their time, they say, let's understand how life works. What are the principles of life that I can understand that will help me engage in life differently? Not dissimilar to the Eastern schools, they're going to try to understand one principle, such as cause and effect, uh, called karma in Hindu philosophy. But karma is not Hindu, it's just a universal law. But people say, I, under I know karma. And I said, mm, theoretically. Because if we understand the consequences of karma, it it will have an impact in the way we understand and engage in life. Because if you understand karma, for instance, or action and reaction, it means that we are completely responsible for who we are and what we do. That's what it means, at, 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 in its essence, which is fantastic, which means that I'm responsible for who I am, what I am, and what I can become, which for me is the source of freedom. What I want to leave you last, perhaps, before we go for the coffees and cakes and stuff. What is the biggest difficulty in what I've said? We know what's right, and yet we don't do it. So what's missing, without judgment? Maybe a bit of will, courage. So we need to remember to develop our courage so that when we are faced with something that requires courage, I can use it. If we never exercise our courage, we never remember to exercise our courage, where, in everyday life, when, when to get up in the morning to start with, I'll go back to what I said. When I really need courage, I cannot call upon it because I never exercise it. It's like a muscle which is flabby. So the biggest difficulty is not to understand what many of the philosophers have said or, or uh, many of the podcasters are saying. It's to remember to doing it, number one, or reflect on it first. But, and at the same time, remember to doing it and to have the courage to... To have the loyalty, is the right word I, that I would like to use, to be loyal to your own choices. Beautiful, isn't it? Because choices are not others, it's our choices. If, let's say, action A and B is the right thing to do because we have agreed to do it, why don't we do it then? When we say I can't do it, the ego says, I won. And my conscience, conscience lost. Sometimes we make a mistake because we're in a bad mood. We realize immediately, why don't we correct it immediately then? Do you understand? But that depends on us. So I went off, which we all have the right to be off sometimes. But also when we go off, we feel it immediately. But, have, but why not rectify it, correct it, whatever word you prefer. So that's loyalty. I'm loyal to what I think is right. I didn't say that we shouldn't make any mistakes on the contrary. Let's make many mistakes, but learn from them and overcome them. 